Yo, what is cooling? What is happening? We have a mock draft and we have a big one. We're going to be doing a four round mock draft, two rounds today and the final two tomorrow. I hope you guys are doing amazing. My name's G Sling. I'm doing my thing, of course, and I hope you are too. And I'm sorry, I've been a little bit busy. I've been on the move. I'm moving and I got all done. I'm ready to go. Starting to get all those things, you know what I'm saying? Plus dealing with some family, all those good jazz issues. But without further ado, Round number one action. Let's go right into it here. And what do we got going on? And yes, a trade, I know. Very unoriginal, right? But hey, it's gonna more than likely happen. And I say more than likely, I would say it's about a 95% chance, at least at this moment, unless the Bears do decide to take Bryce Young or they just don't. There's gonna be somebody who wants a trade. Are you kidding me for Bryce Young? Or hey, CJ Stroud, whatever. Will Levis, that would be wild. But let's go into the trade. This time it's the Indianapolis Colts coming up. Yet it could be the Indianapolis Colts, the Houston Texans. I think those are your two teams that are the most likely scenario wise. But you never do know. Like the Carolina Panthers, the Vegas Raiders, a lot of options. But I'm going with the Indianapolis Colts. Jim Irsay, gotta get demanding. Chris Ballard knows he needs to find his quarterback of the future. He's going to give up a big amount or a lot amount of picks, should I say, in a first rounder next year, a second rounder this year, and a second rounder next year in order to acquire the Chicago Bears number one overall selection. Yeah, it could be a little bit more. We'll see what it ends up being. This trade package will be very, very interesting, but it should be a pretty big one, whichever it one it may be, whether the Texans, Colts, or whatever team there we go on, though, to the pick itself. Bryce Young, easy selection for me. People will debate, so he's too small, he's a midget. Bro, have you seen Bryce Young play? He is unanimously the best quarterback in this draft class, in my opinion. That's no knock. There's some good quarterbacks and a lot of potential, and I'm not saying Bryce Young is going to be the best long-term, even though it's kind of what I'm saying, but I think, I mean, for me personally, he's the best quarterback prospect that I've seen since Joe Burrow. If you take out the size and everything like that, like, the dude is legit in every category of his game. Yeah, he takes a little bit. He has to take one more step back in his dropbacks and maybe other quarterbacks because of his height. That could be a bit of a concern. He'll have to adjust and when you're a team that has a smaller quarterback what do you need to do you need to have a good offensive lineman especially interior to be able to protect and be able to be able to see over those guys and I think that is going to be important for Chris Ballard and building this organization going forward but moving on to a bit of a shocker it's going to be Jalen Carter the interior disruptor from Georgia here at the Houston Texans we like no quarterback G-Sling what are you doing the Houston Texans they need a quarterback well we maybe have plans out there where in other situations you never do know but Jalen and Carter to me might be the best player in the draft him and Bryce Young it's a toss-up whatever you want to call it Jalen Carter really the only knock on him is the limited amount of reps and that he wasn't really you know you don't you know I gotta project a little bit in that all oh, conditioning I'm not worried about it Jalen Carter is an animal the power speed size combination is one of the best we've ever seen from a defensive interior prospect and you can make the argument that interior presence is even more important than the edge presence nowadays in the NFL getting pressure of the quarter in the middle of the middle is so vital for a defensive line and Jalen Carter is going to be that record on to the Arizona Cardinals it's going to be Will Anderson Jr. from Alabama easy selection right top three picks go get yourself a foundational piece in will anderson jr we go on to the bears we're ooh, they're like oh man that kind of sucks man we traded down to number four but at the end of the day miles murphy might be a better fit than will anderson yes you would love to get jalen carter on that interior or even will anderson on the outside and jalen and will anderson is totally i think he could fit in any scheme but Miles Murphy might be a bit of a better fit for Matt Eberflus in this defensive line. He sees him and he's like, yo, I can work with those traits. This is like quitty play pay on steroids. Miles Murphy, I do have questions with the production. It's not all there on film. He needs to work on his power. Or maybe his leverage is really the biggest issue with Miles Murphy. But the dude has oozing tools, raw tools that you just love to see. Him. Miles Murphy, man. Yeah, he's going to be, if you develop him, he will was going to be one of the better pass rushers in the NFL and he has a higher ceiling than Will Anderson it's just a matter of can he hit that ceiling it's always a question of can you hit the ceiling but Miles Murphy I think is a really really good player and to take him here at number four overall is still a really good pick to me in my eyes on to number five Tyree Wilson, another toolsy edge rusher out of Texas Tech. This guy is just, he's another one of those guys where it's you betting on the traits, right? You're betting on the traits. And the production was there this year, which is something you wanted to see. Yes, he's a little bit of an older prospect compared to Miles Murphy. But at the end of the day, like the dude 
super long, super athletic, explosive, got enough athletic ability to be able to get to the edge combined with his power and a frame that he has built up there. It's going to be a matter of time to put him on, uh, you know, whether you're going to be moving him on the inside or using him as an outside rusher. I think he gives you a lot of versatility too on this Seattle front, which is something that Pete Carroll has always seemed to value on their defensive lines. And if you combine him with like Daryl Taylor, Boye Mafe, and guys like Achino Nwosu, I think he'd be a nice little element that they don't have on that defensive line. So I like Tyree Wilson on this front. And then we go on to the Detroit Lions, and it's going to be Devin Witherspoon, the corner out of Illinois. This was not really a hard selection for me. You could argue which corner you want, though. Christian Gonzalez, Joey Porter. I think those are all your guys that you're considering at this spot. But to me, Devin Witherspoon is that making of the true number one corner on the outside. He's that guy. You put him on the best receiver week in, week out. He has the great man coverage skills, attacking downhill. He plays way bigger than that six foot 183 frame and size. Like, dude, he plays bigger than Kelly Ringo, I feel like. But the dude is an absolute monster at Illinois. Really like his game. Bring him here to Detroit. Fits this scheme perfectly. Moving on, though, to the Vegas Raiders. Pick number seven, we go. And they're going quarterback, C.J. Stroud, out of the Ohio State University. Are you surprised? Hey, they need a quarterback. Replace Derek Carr. Pretty simple. I think he's a plug-and-play guy. Maybe not the super high-end upside, in my opinion. Might be a Dak Prescott, a Ryan Tannehill. But Josh McDaniel said, I gotta keep my job. And he's gonna go get himself a quarterback in C.J. Stroud, who I think could be a great day one starter for this team. Hey, rely on Josh Jacobs. And he's already, you know, kind of hinted, yo, you get the right quarterback in place, and I'm going to keep coming back for a cheaper contract. Can I wait a minute, though? We're moving on because we have a trade alert. The phones are ringing. Hold on. Let me answer the phone. What's going on, Terry Fortnite saying? Houston Texans, Nick Casario making a move up. We talked about it earlier. Let's go grab the sure thing in Jalen Carter. We can decide on what we want to do with the quarterback position later on. And they are going to be getting aggressive here to jump in front of the Carolina Panthers. And maybe the Panthers pick up Derek Carr on free agency. Or I think it's going to be between them, Washington. I think those are kind of your teams that are looking at Derek Carr at the moment. But hey, for the time being, Houston Texans moving up here to pick number eight. There's other teams that might be looking to move up anyway. They have to give up a third rounder for the Atlanta Falcons, and that's okay. It's not too bad. They've got plenty of picks still going forward in the future, so it's not like they're mortgaging anything crazy, and they're going to be coming up for Will Levis, quarterback, and this is, again, maybe not what I would do, but I, I still think Will Levis has a ton of upside. You know that the dude has crazy amounts of tools, and he also could be that elevator type of quarterback. When you're talking about the ceiling, a type of dude that could be a top seven sort of guy. Will Levis could be that dude. You surround him with better tools, a better offensive system. He could really develop into someone that you're like, yo, this guy is going to help us win a Super Bowl. Matthew Stafford's kind of been my comp for him. I think he's going to have a couple of years in his career where he's one of the top end quarterbacks. But I think he's going to be a little bit more variable. I don't see him being a year in, year out, top flight quarterback. But that's fine. I do think he can win a Super Bowl, though, if you surround him with enough weapons. And I think he's got enough to elevate your roster. And the Houston Texans go get themselves Jalen Carter, a solidified stud, and Will Levis here at their quarterback position after missing out on Bryce Young. Going on to the Carolina Panthers, I know this one's going to be a bit of a slide pick for some people, and I get it. Running back position is not very popular nowadays, but for me personally, I love the running back position. I think Bijan Robinson is a true difference maker in the receiving game, in the running game. He is an overall beast. Hook them horns. Let's go. Get Bijan Robinson in here to have an identity. Whether Derek Carr comes in here would be a perfect scenario because this would be the Josh Jacobs. And you just pound the ball with this great offensive line. In my opinion, it's going to be really good if they can just continue developing. And, you know, obviously, you got injury woes. You can always happen. And staying healthy is really important. But I think they have the potential to be a top 10 offensive line next year. Maybe one, you know, slight one or two more improvements here and there. But I think they do have the potential to be a really good offensive line. Bijan Robinson running behind. This good offensive line would be fun to see. And, and we talked about maybe Derek Carr coming in to this organization to be that just solid quarterback and to lead this team going forward. They've, been, they've got some pieces. On to number 10, it's Christian Gonzalez. No surprise here. And 
Yay, we're going to talk about the Super Bowl. Oh, my gosh. What happened there? You know, but, hey, it is what it is. The holding call, whether you like it or not. I'm not even going to comment on it. You know, Bradbury came out and said, yo, it was a holding. And that's a respect, man. I respect that and what he came out just basically owning it there. At the end of the day, it was a really, really tough call. Eagles fans were like, oh, my God, we should have won the freaking Super Bowl. Chiefs fans are like, oh, that was a holding, man. Are you kidding me? What are you talking about? He just destroyed him. He threw him on the ground. Juju was on there. <laughs> anyway, getting back to this pick, though, Christian Gonzalez is going to be the selection here because James Bradbury may not end up being back. The contract situation, we'll have to see how that figures out. you got a lot of guys, whether it's Javon Hargrave, who's been so vital on that defensive line, keeping him could be really, really important. So maybe they prioritize him. I don't know. We'll see how it all plays out, but... Howie Roseman's going to have a couple of difficult decisions to make. Christian Gonzalez, though, would be the addition. We just really need to see who they end up signing or letting go, really, before we make that selection. Uh, on to the Tennessee Titans. I'm going Peter Skaronsky. And the reason why I'm going Skaronsky over Paris Johnson, I know they drafted the Ohio State University lineman last year. And it could say, oh, let's go draft up Nicholas petit Freer with uh, Paris Johnson. And that does make a lot of sense. But maybe they go get a more like a safer offensive line pick because they need someone who just comes in and you know they're going to be a stud. Peter Skaronsky could be that guy from Northwestern. Give him a shot at left tackle. Hey, they could use guard if Skaronsky does fail. They just need good offensive line play. And that's why I'm going to select Peter Skaronsky here at number 11. On to the Atlanta Falcons. Here at number 12 overall, it's going to be Lucas Van Ness out of Iowa. The Loch Ness Monster strikes again. You see that powerful force that he brings. After the trade down, though, we get a powerful machine. That's what they need to pair along, in my opinion, with an Arnold Epicati. Someone who's got some power, some prowess there off the edge. Also can work on the interior. Get him on some dangerous stunts and twists. I think he's going to be an absolute monster. Pun intended. Yeah, I'm sorry. But, dude, he is so good. I'm a huge fan of Lucas Van Nash to the point where I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to put him yet in my rankings. I'm still kind of going back and forth with Lucas Van Ness. But he's a really, really fun player. If he can put together more than just a bull rush... He's got so much potential to be one of the better pass rushers in the NFL. Just such a great, immense amount of power and leverage. And it's striking ability that you don't find around, you know, speed combination that you don't see every so often. And that's why he's going to go high. It's, I, I see him as a top 15 pick in this draft. On to the New York Jets. What we thought was the New York Jets. Trade alert. Minnesota Vikings are moving up. Ooh, they moved up for you. Like, oh, what's going on here? Okay, first off, let's talk about the trade here. This is crazy. But the Jets are going to get a first rounder next year in 2024 from the Minnesota Vikings to move from pick number 23, 24, whatever, you know, the draft order with the Miami Dolphins forfeiting their pick in order to come up 10 spots with the New York Jets at pick number 13. For AR, Anthony Richardson from Florida. Let's go, Gators. <laughs> this is going to be a man. I would love this pick for the Minnesota Vikings. This, to me, reminds me of like a Pat Mahomes. Go get yourself a quarterback to sit for a year in Anthony Richardson. And he develops. He could turn into that ultimate, uh, you know, the next developmental Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes type of guy. Yes, you need the right quarterback coach. I believe in Kenneth and O'Connell to be able to develop them in this, this staff. I think they're doing a good job. Let him sit behind Kirk Cousins, who will be a starter for one more year. You turn the keys over in 2025 to Anthony Richardson and let this team chomp. Let's go, Florida Gators. Hey, I live in Florida now, but uh, yeah, we're going with it. Anthony Richardson, I'm giving up a first rounder here. I'm totally fine with it for the Minnesota Vikings to reset that quarterback position for them going forward. Pick number 14 for Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. I'm going Paris Johnson Jr. out of the Ohio State University. Easy pick. Well, it wasn't actually that easy because I had to debate. They need receiver help and they need an impact playmaker on the outside or somebody who can be a vertical separator, or not a vertical separator, but a... Just a separator, right? Someone who can get open quick. But at the end of the day, I can't pass up on Paris Johnson Jr. I feel so good about him as a prospect. Yes, he's got some technical refinements to work on with his hands and footwork and everything like that. But the dude just, he's an NFL tackle through and through. When he gets into an NFL program, NFL training, he's going to be a beast. All the measurements, all the tools are there. That screams left tackle in the NFL for 10 plus years. 
get me Paris Johnson Jr. on the roster. I want the Jets to get him if possible, but hey, they traded down. It's okay. We're all cool and baby, but Paris Johnson going to be this left tackle for the future. And you know the intangible two are there with this guy up the wazoo. On to pick 15. We go to Brian Branch for the Green Bay Packers. And they're going to take him. Dude, he's, he's like Bijan Robinson. It's just, it's tough because the positional value sort of thing, right? But he is such a good player. Whether they want to put him in the slot or deep safety, box safety, he can play it all, man. Brian Branch is just the total package safety modern day guy. All the tools are there. He's just going to be a really good football player. And Green Bay Packers, go get themselves help. Like I said, they need help in the slot or deep. Adrian Amos, also Missile Savage, free agents. Go get Brian Branch. Washington Commanders here at number 16. I'm going with Broderick Jones here. And the reason I'm saying this, look, Brian, Broderick Jones to me, first off, I think he's got the most upside out of any tackle in this draft class or any offensive lineman. I could see him being one of the best tackles in football in three years. But he is going to be a bit of a developmental project. Like he's got all the traits of a dominant left tackle. Like the ferociousness, the power, the tenacity, the movement skills are all there with Broderick Jones. They're oozing with talent. He's oozing with talent. I mean, it's just crazy, man. But he's just technical refinements. His hand power or his grip strength is not there. Like his latching ability, pardon me, because he's got plenty of grip strength. It's latching on consistently like with his hand placement those type of things that need to be worked on and luckily those are things that can be worked on he's got all the talent though to be a top three tack top five tackle in the nfl and the way i see it put him at guard early on while he's trying to work on that and, and you could even put him at right tackle if you wanted to and move Samuel Cosby inside the guard. And that's something that they could do as well. They could experiment. They need in, they need offensive line help in general for the commander. So I'm going to go ahead and take him here at 16. Joey Porter Jr. is going to be my selection for the Steelers. It's just, you know, yeah, the lineage and all that. Just too good not to do. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? Hit me or something. But I have just drooling over this pick. Joey Porter, look at that dark visor too, man. Oh, I love that. Uh, Porter is going to be the pick here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Could get younger, and they need that number one guy in the secondary. Uh, Quentin Johnston <laughs> for the New York I can't wait to see what the Detroit Lions fans say to me on this one. I'm going to get destroyed over the head. Uh, what are you doing, G Sling? But hey, I, he, take him. He would be a huge upgrade over uh, DJ Chark, in my opinion, because hey, they may not sign him. That was kind of like a one year rental thing. Quinton Johnson, Amon Ross St. Brown, what a fun combination this would be for Jared Goff. Keep giving him some more weapons, getting this offense to just a state. And I get it, you need defense. We can continue to add defense in the second round. We got two second round picks. You got free agency. You can't figure everything out in the draft because these guys aren't going to be day one impacts anyway. But Quentin Johnson has that upside to be that number one, even though they've already got Amon Ross St. Brown. But hey, he could be even, he could be, he, he's 250. <laughs> <laughs> I type of, I'm going to leave it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, he plays. He could be that guy. He's 315 pounds at him for three speed. Uh, but yeah, he's 215 pounds. <laughs> that would be funny. Oh my gosh. That'd be like Madden creative player. But anyway, Quentin Johnson is going to be my pick here for the Detroit Lions. All 350 pounds of Quentin Johnson. On to Nolan Smith here for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And they need some juice off the edge, right? Shaquille Barrett is going to be a guy that may be slow coming back from an injury. Finding more help in general at this edge position. And I love Nolan Smith. I think he's just so twitched up and going to add a spark to wherever he goes. I love him in run support too. He's just not afraid of anybody. So go get Nolan Smith here off the edge. Really a big fan of his game. Jordan Addison's going to be my pick here for the Seattle Seahawks. Their second pick. Going Tyree Wilson with their first one. Addison's a guy where, again, it's just like, I'm like, yo, he's the best available. And he's going to be really their separator in the offense. And I know Ty Walker, I'm DK Metcalf, or, you know, no schnubs or anything like that. But you do have to look forward to the future. And I think Jordan Addison would be a nice guy you put in the slot early on. He's your long-term uh, number two receiver with DK Metcalf. Get a little younger, get a little cheaper to go along with DK Metcalf for the future. Because at some point, you probably are going to have to move on from Tyler Lockett. But for the time being, now you have three great weapons for Geno Smith. Keep giving him targets and building around this young core. Next on the list, it's the Bolts. The Lightning Bolts. It's going to be the Los Angeles Chargers. We can go with Brian Brzee out of Clemson. See, I'm a huge fan of Brian Brzee. I get it. The production is not there. But to me, it's just a leverage thing. It's going to be something that he works on at the next level. But like the tools, the explosiveness, the power combination that Brian Brzee offers is something that Chargers really, really need. 
and getting that interior disruptor along with a Khalil Mack and a Joey Bosa on the outside, this could be the best defensive line in football. So I think he'd be the final piece to really clog up those holes up the middle and go get Brian Brazil. I just think he's going to be a really good football. I think his best days are ahead of him. Just got to stay healthy. And that's why he falls to me is just the overall medical check. How does that all work out? Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Baltimore Ravens, they just go get themselves a great football player, a 1,000-yard receiver, year in, year out. That, to me, is Jackson Smith and Jigba out of the Ohio State University. I love his game. He's my top receiver in this draft. I mean, he doesn't have the highest upside, but I think if you're talking about an Amon Ross St. Brown type of dude, that's Jackson Smith and Jigba. I still think he could play on the outside. I, I don't know. We'll see. But at the end of the day, I think he... Uh, his athletic traits do limit him a little bit. I get that. He's not going to be this guy who beats you with speed on the outside. But he wins in the most important areas as a receiver, getting open, separation skills, and catching the football. Antoine Harrison, after the Jets trading down, getting themselves a left tackle for the future. Or right tackle. Hey, you can work with both areas. Antoine does have ability. But I think he's your true left tackle. Makai Becton being your right tackle. Or, you know, ABT, just depending on how things work out with Mekhi Becton. But Antoine Harrison, to me, is a guy that I've just fallen in love with. I think he reminds me a little bit of a, you know, a Laramie Tunsil type of dude and someone who could mold into that. He's just a great pass protector in the league. I don't know if he's ever going to be a great run defender or run blocker, pardon me, but I think he's going to be a really, really good pass protector. Love his movement and mirror skills. Continue to get a little bit stronger, absolutely. But I think he's going to be an impact day number one for this New York Jets team. Uh, and then Dewan Jones. <laughs> Speaking of a big impact, Dewan Jones. Oh my gosh, six foot eight, three hundred sixty pounds, almost a ninety inch wingspan. <laughs> oh my gosh, Dewan Jones, right tackle. Plug him in for Jawan Taylor, and that is just going to be something uh, to help out Trevor Lawrence and his blind side. Uh, well, not blind side, pardon me, but the right side even more. And get a little bit more run block too, which this was the worst run block efficiency grade in the NFL. He's going to help that out. He'll, I'll just say he's going to help that out. <laughs> Dewan Jones from the Ohio State University. Trenton Simpson here from Clemson going to the New York Joe Football Giants. They need linebacker help in all kinds of ways. This guy's going to be a mismatch. Uh, whether you want to put him as a, a rusher or you want to utilize him in you know man-to-man -man coverage, he has all those skills, speed, combination in wing martindale's defense that i think is going to be highly coveted trenton simpson here for the giants desperate need at linebacker uh ringo kelly ringo that is going to be the pick here for the dallas cowboys and jerry jones how about them cowboys yo we're gonna go take kelly ringo here and he's a guy who needs some development no doubt about it you can hone in some of those uh you know kind of those eyes you're like oh be careful Ringo man he's got to get a little bit more under control but overall as a prospect the dude is oozing with that speed size combination that you love and I think in this Dallas Cowboys cover three system I think he's going to really really thrive too I think it's going to be simple for him early on in his career and he can just continue to develop so put him alongside Trevon Diggs and Deron Bland in the slot and you've got a really really good cornerback core uh going to the Buffalo Bills I'm gonna go with Cyrus Torrance Self-explanatory, I know, very, very boring. They need offensive line help. Whether they want to, hey, the tackle could be an interesting selection for them too, of course, because Spencer Brown has not quite been what they needed and they really do need help at that tackle position. Protecting Josh Allen, that was the big thing I was worried about with this Buffalo Bills team was like the offensive line. Can they hold up in the playoffs? And I just didn't think they did a good enough job. They need some offensive line prowess. Osiris Torrance can help them out in tremendous ways. Michael Mayer here to the, the Cincinnati Bengals. He's going to help them out as a blocker and also as a receiving weapon because Tyler Boyd maybe is a loss and Michael Mayer could end up filling that short area need for them combined with the dude can block and he's going to help them out to chipping and things help out protect Joe Burrow, especially if Lel Collins is out early on. But yeah, those are going to be things that I look for. Michael Mayer is just a really complete tight end. 28 overall, a great value as well. Uh, Kalijah Kansi. One of my dudes, just guys that, you know, is starting to get more love, I will say that. And he's starting to go in more first rounds. Uh, Kalijah Kansi, though, is someone that they were looking for, it seemed like, with Kavarius Street. So he kind of fits that mold. Like, this team normally likes a lot of power guys, 
But it seemed like, you know, with that pick and playing Kaveri Street so much, they're looking for a Kalijah Kansi. And Kansi's a dude that's just going to get after the quarterback. That twitchiness, that athleticism profile that he brings. He's, he he's like stays low as leverage. Like he can stop the run still. He's got some areas to improve, and the size will always be a bit of a concern for him. But I think he's going to be nice. If nothing else, a great rotational dude. But I think he's going to be a really, really good interior defense lineman. Could be one of the better pass rushing interior guys, which is so important to get pressure up the middle. On to the Philadelphia Eagles as we're closing up this first round. It's going to be Antonio Johnson out of Texas A&M. This guy is going to be that tight end eraser and something they needed last night versus uh, Travis Kelsey. But Antonio Johnson going to be a nice hybrid defender for them. Whether you want to put him in the slot at safety, he gives you a lot of versatility. Be that Chauncey Gardner Johnson, maybe replacement if they don't bring him back. They just need help. Marcus Epps was trying to cover Travis Kelsey. You saw how that worked out. Not great. It's tough to cover him in general, but I think Antonio Johnson going to be a great cover matchup box safety hybrid dude who's got some good coverage skills finally first round is in the books with will mcdonald edge rusher out of iowa state and uh you know the thing about will mcdonald is he is so twitchy and so explosive off the edge and the chiefs Maybe could use that, right? Frank Clark, someone I'm looking to move on from. And you got George Carl off this. So you got a nice power edge setter there. Needs someone who can be that twitchy guy to come off the edge with some speed and get after the quarterback with some bend. And that, to me, is Will McDonald. I think he's a perfect combination with what they have and uh, just kind of changing things up with, with that defensive line, have different pieces. And I think they could adjust. And Spag always is adjusting. I know he's, oh, he's not a Spag guy, but... You, you know, they need something different on that defensive line. I think Will McDonald could be that guy. On to round number two. It's going to be starting now with the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's going to be Darnell Wright from Texas. This guy has versatility. Left tackle, right tackle, you name it. Pittsburgh Steelers definitely could use some more help at that tackle position, whether it's depth or, hey, they might look in free agency, I will say, because it's kind of interesting. You know, you got Shakuma Wogafor, you got Dan Moore, both guys that could be upgraded from, like, you know, they stayed healthy, and that was so important. They really need depth in general because more than likely they're going to have an injury next year. I believe they had, had all five of their starters played every single snap, which is just wild. But Darnell Wright's going to be able to come in here, give you versatility. He's built like a brick, man. And I think he's going to be a really, really nice offensive lineman. Maybe not high-end upside guy, but I think he's going to be a really, really good offensive lineman. So, yeah, go get some help on the offensive line. Now on to the Houston Texans. We're going to go get a separator. And John Mechie is definitely going to help them out in that regard. But Zay Flowers will be that long-term replacement for Brandon Cooks. And I think sky's the limit with Zay Flowers. But the dude has got so much potential. And when you combine him with what you saw there at the Shrine Bowl, him getting off press... I think that's going to be so important to his evaluation because you didn't see a whole ton of that at Boston College because, hey, who wants to press this guy? I mean, he's got such crazy deep speed and he's going to be a vertical threat in the NFL. But if you combine it with him being able to get off press, he could be really, really dangerous with those ball skills. He's getting, you know, he's got those instincts. Just a matter of being more consistent and everything like that. But Safe Flower is going to be that eventual dude there for Brandon Cooks, who may not be around come next season with the trade potential there. Uh, we go on to the Arizona Cardinals here. And also getting a young receiver for your young quarterback and Will Levis, I think would be really nice too. Uh, Arizona going to be Cam Smith here. And get yourself corner, right? Now, he might be more of a slot corner. And that's kind of why I see him maybe falling to the second round. And I think he's a better prospect than someone like Kyler Gordon. And Kyler Gordon, you know, is interesting and everything like that. But I think Cam Smith, uh, someone that teams might view as just a slot corner, which he might fall down the board towards the back end of the first or the second, top of the second round because of that. But Arizona, they just need good corner play. Whether that's in the slot, whether that's out wide. Byron Murphy is a free agent. What will they do with him? Cam Smith would be a nice upgrade for them at that cornerback position. Uh, and then we go on to the Chicago Bears here with the trade pick from the Indianapolis Colts. And this is going to be John Michael Schmitz. Get yourself a good center. Pretty self-explanatory. Need to find a replacement for Mustafer on that interior offensive line. Protect Justin Fields. He's going to be a beast all around in the run game, pass game. And he showed up in the one-on-ones, man. Dominating. On to the Los Angeles Rams. Pretty self-explanatory. B.J. Ojolari. I mean, need edge rush help. They have other needs, no doubt about it. And they could look at the interior of that defensive line. They need some more help. You got a lot of free agents. But, uh, you know, they've got, they've got some needs. There's no doubt. They could use a corner, too. They could use some more offensive line help. 
we'll see what they end up doing. But BJ Ojolari to me help out that edge rushing, uh, you know, position, and which is a big need for them to find that number two guy with Leonard Floyd or maybe number one guy going forward. BJ Ojolari, really, really solid pass rusher. Uh, on to the Seattle Seahawks, I'm going with the big fella, Siaka Ika, out of Baylor, the defensive line, nose tackle, coming here to replace Al Woods for the future, and this guy's going to clog up some lanes, eat some blocks, and just eat for breakfast, and let Boye Mafe, Tyree Wilson, and, uh, you know, Chinna Wosu, Daryl Taylor, just let them thrive even more, helping build that core on that defensive line. On to the Raiders we go, back on the clock. Deontay Banks, out of Maryland, a nice cornerback prospect. The size, profile, build you look for, athleticism, all those tools are there. I want to see his ball skills get a little bit better, but man, this guy could be an unbelievable talent. And uh, Raiders could really use some corner, especially an outside corner. Maybe keep Nate Hobbs on the, uh, you know, inside at slot. Even though he's got some versatility, no doubt about it. But neat cornerback help in, in general with Rocky and Sim being a free agent. So going Deontay Banks could really help them out in that regard. Get some defensive help. Secondary in general has not been good for the Raiders. Uh, Foskey, Isaiah Foskey, in, at this point, is going to be the pick here for the Notre Dame, or for the Carolina Panthers from Notre Dame, should I say. But uh, we're going to go with Foskey here, who's a guy. Who I feel really, really good about as a very solid edge rusher. Yes, he needs to continue to work on his power, but I think the dude has the tools to be that guy, to be that speed to power edge rusher and be that guy to pair along with the Brian Burns. I think it's a nice complement of skill set too. And I like him in the run game, and I think he can continue to develop into a really, really good player. So go get yourself a nice little pass rusher here for the Carolina Panthers, in along with Bijan Robinson there. Uh, we got a trade alert. It's the New Orleans Saints. They're going to be trading with the Green Bay Packers, who have found a player that I've interested. They're not giving up on, but the Saints need some later round picks. And maybe this is two fifth round picks. I, don't know, I may have to adjust some things. I don't know if that's fair value. So pardon me there. But it's a small trade. I kind of looked at it. New Orleans Saints, I was like, you know what? There's a player I want. I feel like we can get him five spots back anyway. The Green Bay Packers moving up for a guy in Jameer Gibbs running back out of Alabama and they're going to jump in front of a team here to come up and get a running back who I feel will be a great replacement for Aaron Jones who's his contract in the Green Bay Packers right now the camp situation is a little bit tricky and especially if they were to keep Aaron Rodgers then they're going to really need to find cap space and Jameer Gibbs though either way will really help them out fill that role for this team and uh yeah I think he's going to be you know an Alvin Kamara type of dude just two explosive, great receiving skills help their offense out even more, right? Uh, and get another playmaker too in there. Tennessee Titans here at pick number 41. It's going to be Keon White. And this guy's been on the rise, man, out of Georgia Tech. I get it. Like the dude has got crazy speed. I saw him catching up to Kenny McIntosh down the field trying to cover him. Like, oh my gosh, this dude's got crazy speed. No doubt about it. He's been clocked at some crazy speed as well. But to me, the problem that I see, he's, just, he's off balance a lot. He's on the ground. He needs to work on his pass rush playing. He's very, very raw. But the way I see it for the Titans, they could use him a lot like um, the Demarcus Walker, the Nico Autry sort of role on their defensive line. And, you know, they're going to they're gonna need that. Walker's a free agent this year. And then also Autry's a free agent next year. They're probably not going to be able to pay him because you have Jeffrey Simmons you got to pay. And they're already paying Harold Landry. So finding a guy on that, that defensive line who can be an edge rusher and on the interior used on like five tech, like I said, the, D, D, the Nico Autry role uh, is really going to be important for their defense. And I think he can fit that role. It'll be dangerous on those stunts and twists as well with that crazy athleticism. Uh, on to the uh, Cleveland Browns here at pick number 42. Pretty self-explanatory. Defensive line. They need a run stopper. That's Mozzie Smith. If he can put it, you know, together some more technique and refinement in his pass rush plan, I like he'll give you upside there. He's got the athletic traits to definitely provide some upside, but he'll be a great run defender for them day one, which is something that they have a serious problem. And maybe Perel, per, uh, Perne, uh, uh, Winfrey can be a good number two guy with them as a pass rusher, but that's kind of the way I'm going here. But now, yes, it's on to that big trade alert. Aaron Rodgers what happens and as obviously as a Jets fan I'm really curious to see what happens with this and the whole Nathaniel Hackett hiring it, yes it all clicks there if Aaron Rodgers is going anywhere I think the Jets are the team right they're the team that we we have a lot of pieces I don't think we're perfect yet or anything like that but adding an Antoine Harrison is going to really help we could really use a safety no doubt about it 
uh, linebacker, you know, defensive tackle. We're really thin at that position going forward if we don't re-sign Sheldon Rankins and, you know, Nathan Shepard. Those are guys we have to look at, no doubt about it, but we have a lot of the tools to get there, and Aaron Rodgers would be a huge addition, no doubt about it. And plus, Zach Wilson, it makes so much sense. Keep Zach Wilson, let him develop for a year or two while Aaron Rodgers is here and our quarterback. So I love doing this, and it just makes so much sense. And as I was saying, I think if Aaron Rodgers goes anywhere, it's to the New York Jets for a second-round pick this year and a first-round pick next year. Remember, we traded down to, got a first-rounder next year. So I felt like it was something like, yo, we give up, you know, a second-rounder this year for Aaron Rodgers. I'm cool with that in all rounds, and we had to trade down a little bit, of course. But I just thought it was a win-win. Minnesota, the Jets have ties of trading of course it was very similar move to actually what they made um with uh the move up for a uh elijah vera tucker anyway that's a whole different separate thing but yeah i'm doing it here aaron Rodgers to the new york jets Uh, green bay is going to be getting this selection here for luke musgrave the uh tight end out of oregon state you know vertical threat tight end someone who's going to come in here i think he can develop into a good blocker at some point he's not quite there yet and maybe darnell Wright fits or sorry darnell washington fits the mold of what they want a little bit more but i just think you get a little bit more receiving upside a lot more receiving upside actually with luke musgrave so that's where i'm at i just a little lower on darnell washington i know he may go higher and if we're trying to keep this a little bit more realistic maybe that is the pick but musgrave to me does have the skills to be a good blocker and combined with that vertical uh, threat and speed that he's going to test out at the combine i think it makes a lot of sense here for the packers on to john plus you get him and you know and uh, jameer gibbs is a nice little addition to your offense get some explosiveness and help out christian watson you're adding a lot of speed and dangerous ability (laughs) on you know for especially for you know jordan love or whatever on to the atlanta falcons though here back on the clock after Going and getting Lucas Van Ness in the first round. And this to me is just like, I'm just going to take the best available player. Josh Downs is too good not to take. Really should be off the board at this point in my opinion. But Downs is a guy who, yeah, it might be a combined to the slot only. And that's okay because Oman Zacchaeus is a free agent, I believe. And, you know, they need more help in general. Demir Bird hasn't filled that. You know, like they need a number two guy. And I think Josh Downs can be that dude. And he'll add some speed too. And, kind of be like create some help over the top yes you have Kyle Pitts gonna help that out no doubt about but take a little bit of pressure off Drake London and get a guy who's gonna be a dynamic threat separator sort of dude and Josh Downs doesn't have to be your ex guy right that's Drake London and Kyle Pitts but Josh Downs gonna be a nice third piece in this offense Uh, on to New Orleans Saints we talked about earlier this was the guy I wanted for them because to me you need to move on from Andres Pete go get Steve Avila who I, I don't know if I'm as high on Steve Avila as others, but at the same time, like the guard class is really, really thin in my opinion. Jordan McFadden is someone I like, but Steve Avila is a guy here in the second round who makes a lot of sense for this team. Plug him into that left guard position. Very much a scheme fit too for them. And it'd be a nice replacement for Andres Pete, who they've just got to move on for. Get cheaper, especially with these contracts and all these things, depending if they want to che- keep trying to compete I think Steve Avila makes a lot of sense for them at that left guard position. Uh, Going on here to the New England Patriots, one of my favorite guys, especially at safety position, Chris Smith. Just overall, he's solid. I I get it. He's 5'10", 188. Bill Belichick knows how to utilize those limitations. The tackling concerns will be something that we're all talking about with Christopher Smith. But, but, uh, dude, he just... He's always in the right place at the right time, it seems like. So instinctual as a safety and I just love him as a back-end defender and a Devin McCourty sort of replacement if he ends up retiring, which he's now, what, 35, going on 36 years old. Definitely need to look at that long-term. And I see Christopher Smith as that back-end defender for the New England Patriots. Going on to the Washington Commanders here, I'm going to go with Emmanuel Forbes out of Mississippi State, a guy who is a ball hawk through and through. The only thing you really worry about is Hey, he's a little skinny. Okay, there could be a bit of a concern. Is you know, just get bullied, you know, by some of these bigger corners and whatnot. But the dude makes freaking plays. That's all I'll say. And the commanders, with that pass rush, just let him one manual for his play zone coverage and make plays. That's really what they're gonna ask of him. He makes so much sense as an outside corner for them. Get a little bit more youth on in that back end. Going into the Detroit, onto the Detroit Lions, into the Detroit, into Detroit. Let's go to Detroit. I'm ready to go. Oh, I'm done with traveling, actually. Oof, man, I'm ready. <laughs> Drew Sanders, though, going to be the pick here for the Detroit Lions, who, to me, is a guy who 
fits this mold for Alex Anzalone. Hey, they blitzed Alex. I saw him blitz quite a bit with Alex Anzalone. So I think Drew Sanders would be a huge upgrade for them over Alex Anzalone. He was a guy who you definitely want to get on, you know, to blitz, right? He's going to be a good blitzing linebacker. And for the Lions, I see him as a nice little fit in this defense. And you get him here at pick number 48 to go along with some more defensive help in Devin Witherspoon. And into your defense line, probably another area we need to look at later, maybe with that other second round pick. So we'll keep an eye out on that. But uh, Drew Sanders, I thought was a good value here. And getting that, you know, that middle linebacker for them and threat as a blitzer too. And you can get creative with Drew Sanders. Uh, going on, another linebacker. It's Jack Campbell, Captain Jack. But I felt like he's going to be a nice fit here for the Pittsburgh Steelers and be that replacement for Devin Bush. Who, you know, Miles Jack could be a guy who they look to move on from as well. So even if they sign Devin Bush, I still think linebacker could be an upgrade. Robert Spillum is also a free agent. Now, he's more of a strong side guy who also plays a little bit on the line, covers tight ends and stuff like that. But Jack Campbell's a dude who I feel really, really good about as a middle linebacker, great tackler, solid enough coverage instincts as well. Uh, you know, but very instinctual guy, wrap up tackler, and fits a Pittsburgh Steeler mold, right? Onto the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and we got three linebackers in a row. They were all flying off the board today. Whoa, man, but there's some good linebackers. I will say, you know, we're underrating this linebacking class. I think there's some talent in this class. I'm serious, man. The more I'm watching these guys, I'm like, you know what? There can be some potential linebackers that come out of this class. Henry Toa Toa has been a little under underappreciated, in my opinion. I think he's a really good player. Very instinctual guy. And, you know, if you're looking for a dude, you got Levante David's a free agent. You got Devin Bush, who, or sorry, Devin White, who's a free agent, which is at the Pittsburgh Steelers. But, dude, Henry Toa Toa, I think, will be a really, really good linebacker. And put him in there. And whether that's a weak side linebacker role for Levante David, even though you know he plays more as a Mike, whatever, but uh, their defense and that 3-4 attacking defense and, and Todd Bowles. But uh, Henry Toa going to be a nice addition for them. Uh, definitely need some help with that linebacking core that is really, really thin. On to the Miami Dolphins here at pick number 51. And I know A-Chain, it makes just too much sense. Speed, speed, speed. You got so much speed. <laughs> Crazy, man. But dude, A-Chain's a guy I... I view him as a first round pick, like no joke. I think A Chain's insane. He's a difference maker. When you talk about running backs, I get it, okay? The positional value, all this sort of thing. I understand. A Chain's a guy where you just, he's a one of one prospect. You don't find guys like this very often. That's why I think he's going to go earlier, but we'll see what happens. Seems like, he, you know, he's not going early in many mock drafts, but to me, the speed. Every time I watch him, I'm like, oh my gosh, Devin A. Chain. He's so much fun to watch, man. He's an he's an angly racer. His acceleration and speed is just effortless. And uh, Miami gets more of it. And as a Jets fan, I'm going to be, uh, yeah, it's going to be a rough one. But it's a, a fun one. On as a football fan, Luke Whipler is going to be this pick here for the Seattle Seahawks. Hey, we're keeping it balanced. I know they need some defensive help, no doubt about it. But you do have free agency. And I think we help out the defense line, which is a huge priority, it seems like, for Pete Carroll this offseason. Tyree Wilson, Siaka Ika, going to be nice additions for them. Maybe we add a secondary piece soon, or a linebacker, probably a big knee, uh, too. And, and that's probably going to be a top of the third round area where we have to go for it. But I felt like the linebackers kind of went. We had a run on those. And Luke Whippler was just the best available of what they needed going to be a great center for them nice pass protecting guy i think he's just gonna be a really solid dude not the most powerful guy not going to get a ton of push in the run game but he's going to help protect geno smith or whatever future quarterback is under center here on to the bears keanu benton i am a huge fan of benton out of wisconsin the dude has so much potential i think to be a really really good interior pass rusher and not just a run defender but the bears need help on that interior defensive line and go get yourself Keanu Benton. Maybe not that perfect three-tech mold that Matt Eberflus likes, but they just need a quality interior pass rusher. And I think Benton has the tools to be that guy. So whether he's in that, you know, the mold of a Grover Stewart, or, you know, I just think they need help on that interior for the Bears. Go get yourself the best player. Uh, now we go on to the Bolts again, who are going to be taking Jalen Hyatt. They're taking a bolt of lightning. Jalen Hyatt is that speed threat that they need to take a little bit of pressure off of Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and get Justin Herbert. That guy to launch some bombs. And that's what they're going to do. Oh, no, it's going to get triggered now on YouTube. Oh, he just said it. But anyway, uh, Jalen Hyatt is a guy who I think will be a fun one in this offense. On to Gervin Dexter, the monster out of Florida, the Gator. We're going to take an interior defensive lineman. 
getting some help on that interior, which will be a nice little, uh, you know, him and uh, Ali McNeil will be a fun combination. I think Irvin Dexter can be better at in the NFL as a three tech, even utilizing him as a pass rusher. Like he's got so much potential if he can just utilize his pass rusher. Like he's just sitting there sometimes. It's like, yo, you're winning the battle, but you're just doing nothing. Disengage. Come on, Gervin, man. He's got so much potential. I, every time I watch him, it's like, ah. Oh. Frustrating, man, but really, really good prospect. Just a matter of can you uh, put those tools to good use? Now we go on to Dalton Kincaid here to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Need a good tight end. They get themselves that. Well, Evan Ingram, if he's back, then obviously this isn't as big of a need. But the cap situation for them is a little hair squirm. So Dalton Kincaid, to me, really, really good prospect. He'll be a nice receiving weapon, too, for them. You, like I said, you kind of have your three receivers set for this year. And that's why I think... Maybe receiver early is not going to be the play this season. Next year, I could really see that being the need for them as the top pick. But for now, I'm going to go to add a good receiving tight end in Dalton Kincaid. Especially, we'll see how Evan Ingram, if he comes back, but could be out of their price range. Michael Wilson, senior bow riser. Let's freaking, he showed that he can get off the line and he can get off the line quick. Great route running ability and great size. He's going to be a fun player to watch in the NFL. I can't wait. But Michael Wilson... To the New York Football Giants, they need a receiver. We went Trenton Simpson in the first round. Go get the receiver in the second year, Michael Wilson. And, you know, because we had a you know, run of receivers earlier, I just felt like this was the value to go get Trenton Simpson on the board. Michael Wilson going to be a fun player to see if he can be that number one for this team in a good combination with what they have, too. And, and that's what I felt like he'd be a nice little fit into that offense. On to the Dallas Cowboys. Back on the clock here with Sean Tucker, speed thread out of Syracuse, big orange. Dude, oh my God. I still like Sean Tucker. I went back and, you know, I watched Sean Tucker and it's like, you know, I think he's being a little underrated at this point. Really, really good player. You know, didn't have maybe the season that he wanted to have, but he's still a really, really good running back in the speed. He reminds me so much of like Jonathan Taylor. There's just so much there and he could be a nice Ezekiel Elliott replacement for this team. Yeah, they get some other needs too. Maybe safety. Uh, you know, a JL Skinner would be a fun prospect for them, or even a Jordan Battle, someone like that. Donovan Wilson, I believe, is a free agent too. Uh, what other area? Interior defensive line could be a big need, but Gervin Dexter off the board. There's still some guys available. We'll see what they can do in the third round. But on to the Buffalo Bills. Going to go with Jordan Battle. This guy goes to battle with you every single game. Safety position, oh, man, I can't wait for DeMar Hamlin. If he does come back, it's going to be a fun one to see. No matter what, though, I think they need some back-end help. And Jordan Battle is that Mr. Reliable guy. So go get someone in that secondary that can, uh, you know, just continue to keep that strength, the strength with Jordan Poyer getting older, being a free agent. Also, Micah High coming off injury, getting older. All those things you have to really work at. Uh, and then on to the Cincinnati Bengals, Matthew Bergeron out of Syracuse. Two Syracuse players here going in close proximity. I'm a big fan of some of these Syracuse guys, man. And Matthew Bergeron is kind of the way I felt about Bernard Ryman in a lot of ways. Not they're different prospects, but I love the way Bergeron plays, man. His foot, his foot speed, his mirroring ability, it's there, man. Yay, you know, he's not the most powerful guy. But he's a really, really fun player. And again, they're totally different prospects. But I just like Matthew Bergeron a lot. And I think he's going to be a dude that could play right tackle as well for a team. So go get Bergeron. And he could even slide to the interior. But I do think he's a tackle. The more I watch, I'm like, this guy can play tackle, man. Uh, so go get Bergeron here to have some more tackle help. And maybe move Jonah Williams inside the guard when Lil Collins comes back. But they're going to need some depth with Lil Collins because I don't think he's coming back early on in the season. On to the Carolina Panthers here. Pick number 61 as we're rounding out the second round. I'm going Clark Phillips out of Utah. Yay, might be a little bit on the smaller side. Specific schemes, all those things. But I love Clark Phillips, man. Such an instinctual player. Great ball skills. The dude is going to be a really good corner. He may not be the super high-end guy, but they need some more corner help. Looking at it, man, like, it's got some question marks, man, besides J.C. Horn and, you know, Dante Jackson's not maybe been, you know, insane. He's coming off injuries, too, so we got all those things got to work out. C.J. Henderson hasn't worked out. Uh, you know, you got Keith Taylor, nice backup corner, but I think they need some more corner help. So go get Kark Phillips here and just feel like the best available player. 
On to the Eagles, and dude, the offensive line, man, why not invest more in it? It's a Howie Roseman thing, and it's a good thing. The offensive lines last night actually were the real winners in the game, I'll say that, but line up and do QB sneak every every play. Ah, oh, man. But go get some more offense line up. Isaac, Simala, uh, Isaac Samalu is a guy who you look to, you know, free agent, got to figure that out long term. So maybe replacing him with Cody Mock, who could be a nice developmental piece or even a day one starter for them. Maybe Jack Driscoll could fill into that role early on and, and Mock could be your long-term guy. And you could always, you know, hey, you might even want to try him out at right tackle. You never know for Lane Johnson for the future because he's getting a little bit older now. So a lot of interesting things. Continue to invest in the trenches. It's an Eagles thing. And I just felt like, hey, why not, right? We might have to go defense line here soon. Wona Morris going to be the pick here to finish out the second round. You're like, Wona Morris, whoa! Dude, I watched, I've been watching Wona Wona Morris, and he's going to be high in my tackle rankings. I'm just going to say that right now. He has some things he has to work on, but the tools are there. And there are some concerns, like, why didn't he, you know, maybe develop a little bit better, you know, a little bit under performance, injuries, things like that, some question marks. You're going to have to talk in the interview process what's going on there. But the dude has the traits and the tools to be a you know high-end starter not just a starter in my opinion like he could be a really good starter in the nfl we'll see and they've had success out of oklahoma lineman before so maybe they go back to the well and take wona morris so i really like him watch out for this guy but i'm gonna go and take him here at the end of the second round as a developmental right tackle maybe they sign someone in free agency to fill that starting void right away but wona morris will be the eventual heir apparent at that right tackle position for the kansas city chiefs Keep a strength, a strength. What we saw, you know, at least doing a good job keeping Patrick Mahomes upright. Now, I know that Mahomes, you know, was running and everything like that. But, you know, hey, that's what Mahomes does. Mona Moore is going to finish out the second round. Hope you have a good day and everything like that. My name is G-Sling. I'm doing my thing. Keep out for round number three, round number four tomorrow. We'll see what we got. I don't know. It's going to be an interesting one. But I'll talk to you later.